I heard uh, Olaf Peters from uh, Isalin is saying that uh, we can do things that they cannot do, and vice versa, of course. And I think Leuvenair is uh, such a project uh, because um, the question was raised, how many stations are there in Brussels? Uh, well, in Leuven, there are no official stations. So the, 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 the nearest official, stations, o official station uh, of AMM is in Aarschot, which is uh, 20 kilometers away. Um, so this is one of the... Uh, the motivation to start this motivation to start this project, and uh, it is very, um, very. It has a lot of resemblance with the Influencer project here in Brussels. Um, this was the map of uh, sensors of uh, low cost sensors uh, in Leuven um, one month ago, and now uh, one month further, there are now almost 70 of these in Leuven. So we had a very big, big project uh, together with, with uh, two, two partners uh, to, um, uh, to realize such a high density, high resolution network. And I, I will explain the process uh, that we did to achieve this. So what is Leuvenair? Um, as I already told you, we have the same objectives as influencers, so measure, um, find us, a particular matter. Um, in, in a high resolution and driven by citizens. So it's a, a community-driven initiative for air quality measurements, but it's also about uh, raising awareness. So it's not only um, about uh, um, using citizens as, as a crowdsourcing, cent crowdsourcing uh, source. Um, as you, in, a, in a pure crowdsourcing project, you just take the citizens as a kind of uh, sensor drones uh, this is not what we want to do in this project. Uh, we, we also want to raise awareness and um, to uh, involve citizens with the, um, the, all the problems uh, in uh, air pollution. We also share some common developments uh, with Influencer, and there are some, some very nice platforms to share common developments, like uh, we communicate through a, a dedicated uh, Slack space, and uh, the, the code is shared on GitHub. Um, history is, though, a bit different. Uh, and here I show the <clears throat> timeline of Leuvenair. So um, we started with a website uh, in November 2017. And I contacted some, um, well, I contacted Straten van Leuven, which is, a, a, which is an existing uh, citizen platform in Leuven working around mobility. Um, and they were so enthusiastic about the project that they immediately decided to buy 100 sensor kits to, uh, uh, to install in Leuven. Um, we had some um, media attention. For example, there was an item on the VRT News in December, and I had an interview with Radio 1. So the, the news was spread. Um, quite easily, uh, and we um, we searched for 100 citizens in Leuven to uh, uh, volunteers to hang the sensors, and we uh, organized two big workshops on the 30th of January and the 7th of February to actually make the sensors uh, by the citizens. Yeah? So um, first there was a presentation from uh, Frans Fierens from Inserline. Uh, kind of scientific introduction, and then um, the second part of the evening was really devoted to making the sensors, uh, what some of you are going to do this afternoon. Um, and then out of Leuvenair, the Civic Lab was also uh, um, um, started, well, we, we are going to start uh, next Wednesday, we will have the first Civic Lab. Um, and also there, the, the, uh, the objectives are the same as Civic Lab Brussels. So here, um, I mentioned the two well, most important partners um, that we are collaborating with. So it's Straten van Leuven. Uh, I already mentioned this. Huh? So uh, they gave, in fact, a budget to buy these 100 kits. And their budget came from the province. So the province of Vlaamse Brabant, uh, they gave a budget of uh, uh, 75,000 euros uh, to, um, to organize projects around climate. And we got a small part of this budget uh, to, to buy these sensors. 
Um, on the other hand, we have also quite some support from the city of Leuven. Uh, for example, we can use the, the we could use the, the the room for the workshops for free, and also the the room for the civic labs uh, will be free. So um, they are also supporting us in another way, but I will discuss that later. So these are some impressions of the um, workshop. Um, the pictures are. Some of the pictures are uh, rotated, sorry for that. Um, so it was, um, I think it was a very nice success and it was a, a, an, uh, also a nice way of communicating, direct communication with the citizens about air quality. Um, you see that all kinds of people were there. I think there was not really a gender equality. Um, there were only a few uh, female participants, so that's maybe a point we can work on. <laughs> um, so what's next? So I will present four plans or four possible routes that I see to, to, mo to, to develop. Uh, so first, as I already told you, we have the civic labs. Um, we will convene every two weeks on Wednesday evening. And uh, the objective is really to work also with the data. So we would like really to, to analyze the data uh, and to see where are possible hotspots in Leuven of, uh, of particulate matter. Um, on the other hand, we also want to, to, to do some technical development. Uh, for example, first place to, to uh, improve the website, but also we would like to do some uh, hardware development. For example, the KU Leuven, the University of Leuven, they have an, a known LoRa, LoRa network um, and we could use that for free to test the, the LoRa uh, solution that was developed by Influencer. Also, we need some uh, people that are uh, better than us in, uh, in communicating in social media. Uh, we are doing it now um, ad hoc. And we don't know a lot about citizen engagement and we would like to recruit some experts also uh, in this in, uh, matter. Another thing, and I, personally I think this is a very interesting one, um, we are starting also collaboration with an, uh, the ARGSD uh, section of the architecture uh, department in KU, at KU Leuven. And what they are actually making uh, for the moment, it's, it's still in progress, uh, they are making low cost screens like this. So it's e-ink e screens that you can find, for example, also in the supermarket to display prices. Um, so their plan is to uh, develop kind of screens that you can put as a citizen uh, in your street and um, to display all kinds of information. And a key, ish, a key feature is also that there is communication about this information. So you have there these buttons with these smileys and you can push the button if you like or dislike this information. So, um, and they would like to show the data from Leuvenair on the screens. So the, the, the idea is really to, to, uh, to display the information, but also to interact with the citizens on this information. So it's just starting, it's not yet rolled out, uh, but I think this is a very, very nice uh, development. Um, <clears throat> the city of Leuven also supports us in another way. So uh, citizens can now order um, by the, the, the city um, a low-cost sensor that they can, uh, that they can connect them to, to Leuvenair. So they will, uh, give the, they, will, they will buy the material, the, the, the stuff to, to make it. Uh, and then the citizen has to, has to install it at, at his or her home. Um, so there are, of course, some requirements there. And then um, the Curieusenusen is already uh, mentioned a few times here. And um, we have now the budget to, uh, to buy for the 100 participants of uh, Strate van Leuven, so the 100 sensors in Leuven. We have now also the budget to buy for them uh, these uh, passive samplers for NOx or NO2. Um, and um, in the in the project, uh, they will have priority in the selection of measuring points because then we, we have really, an, at the same spot, an, a particulate matter 
observation and uh, NO2 observation. So that's a very nice collaboration uh, with, um, yeah, mainly it was by, done by uh, Irseline, so thanks for that, uh, that we have now also a connection with this project. Um, so I want to, to um, end with these slides because I think uh, we have now discussed a whole morning about uh, air pollution and uh, air quality and um, I think it's a serious matter and it's, it should be um, studied in a serious way but I think measuring is also fun and that was also part of my motivation because I really like to to, to, to uh, make my own sensor and to install it in, uh, at my home and to really know what is happening in, in your place. It's, it's really a very nice thing. And so these are the things that you will need to, to make the sensor, to the, the one that we are implement, implementing, yeah, so the SDS uh, 011. Um, and I think it's amazing that you can make from this ordinary things, uh, and, and, and a spot where you really derive information about the air quality of your, uh, of your place. So these are, uh, sorry, the, the pictures are uh, rotated again, but these are some, uh, some examples from Germany, so where they have also a contest in making the most beautiful one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then of course it's uh, it's all about these graphs, so you can um, see whether your air quality at your place is better or worse than the official um, measurements. Of course, taking into account all the 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 issues that you have with low cost sensors, that's also very um, important that you communicate about that. Um, and for, this is an example of my sensor where I could spot some neighbors having an outdoor party at my backyard um, and they were using fire pits, so producing a lot of uh, particulate matter. Um, so this is a nice example and this one uh, is also a nice example, so it was not, it's not my own sensor, but with this sensor we could, we could uh, uh, detect uh, a, a wood, uh, uh, no, and a house fire uh, in the in the direct vicinity of our sensor. So that's um, that's maybe petit soir, but it's uh, it's nice to show, and it's it illustrates, I think, uh, also the the nice things that you can do with your sensor. It's not only about the serious signs for air pollution, but it's also just fun to make it and to hang it at your home. Thank you.